Hello and welcome to the second part of switching to Ubuntu GNOME. In this video, we're going to focus on improving the aesthetics of the GNOME desktop environment. The first thing I want to do is install some custom icons. So let's find some custom icons to install. A good place to find icons in my experience is gnome-look.org. This website has a bunch of themes and icons and backgrounds that relate to GNOME. To find the icons, I'm just going to, oh, there it is. I was gonna use Control F because I couldn't see it, but right here, I'm gonna click on icons. And then I'm gonna click on highest rated because this is going to filter out all of the icons that are generally considered to be ugly and are incomplete or buggy and stuff like that. And I already know which icon pack I want. It's called Flatter 1.3. So let's click this and you can see a preview if you like of what the icons look like generally. When you want to install the icon pack, choose the download button at the bottom left here, and it will take you to the page that has the download link if there is one, otherwise it will just download immediately. It seems to me that there is no download button for this icon pack, it wants you to use a git clone. I don't have git installed at the moment, but I happen to know that if you go to the github repository by simply selecting the link excluding the .git extension, there is a download zip button. So I'll press that and it's gonna to go to my downloads folder. I'm gonna to go to that downloads folder now. And as you can see, we have flutter icons masters dot dot zip. I'm gonna right click and extract here. And you'll see that we get this file called flutter icons master. It's called master because that's the name of the branch on Git because we download it directly from source control. And when you open it up, you'll see that there are two icon packs, flutter and flutter dark. I just want flutter. The way that Ubuntu detects, or rather the way that GNOME detects custom icons is based on convention rather than configuration. Meaning that if you were to take this Flutter icons folder and you were to place it in the themes directory, which I'll show you in a second, it wouldn't work because there is no file called index.theme inside of this folder. However, the folder Flutter does have an index.theme file. So does flatter.dark. So make sure you don't just copy and paste this folder. Make sure you copy and paste the folder that has the index.theme file directly inside of it because GNOME is not going to traverse all of these directories to find it. The folder that we need to move this uh, folder into is called icons and it's located under the computer folder under user, I think, under share. And then in here, there is a folder called icons. And inside of here, as you can see, there are icons like high contrast and humanity. These are the default icons that you can choose from the tweak tool. We'll get to that in a second. But for starters, our first step really is to move that folder into this folder. I'm gonna do that via the terminal because I think this folder might be limited to root. So it's just generally easier to do it via the terminal running a sudo. So I'm gonna move the folder in downloads, flutter icons master, flutter and I'm going to move it into user share icons and now when I list the files in user share icons I forgot the leading forward slash user share icons you can see that in addition to humanity and we also have flutter and if we type ls with flutter you can see that here's our index.theme file to enable the icon theme go to the activity overview and search for the tweak tool Unlike with Ubuntu Unity, the tweak tool comes pre-installed. That's kind of handy. And now under the first vertical tab called appearance, you can see under the icons drop down, Flutter is there. And look, as we choose it, notice how the folders adapt the new icon theme. Similarly, if you look at the, um, you see like these uh, refresh buttons and the back and forward buttons in Chrome. Well, when you switch to the custom theme, icon theme, they get changed as well to a much more modern look. Similarly, in the case of the tweak tool, there isn't actually an icon defined. So in the top left here, it hasn't changed, but for Chrome, it looks different and for other programs, it looks different too. Okay, cool. The next thing I want to do is I want to install a theme and the theme that I want to use is called paper. So I'm gonna search for paper gnome theme and hopefully that will come up as the first result and it does. This is the theme that I want to install. And yeah, there is also an icon set, but I prefer to use flatter still. And to install the theme, I'm just gonna go to this section called get paper and click on get paper theme. Now there is a PPA that we could use. I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna just click on the button. It's gonna download a tar.gz file. So 
let me go back into the downloads directory and I'm going to extract this. And the process is very similar. Rather than moving it to an icons folder though, we're going to move it to the themes folder. So here we have paper GTK theme and inside of here we have an install script and that kind of good stuff. I'm not gonna use it though. We also have this paper folder. Now the paper folder again has an index.theme file inside of it. So this is the folder that we want to copy. And let me just verify that I know where I'm moving this. So it's in the same general structure. I think it's under user, under share. And then I believe it's a folder called themes. Yep, and as you can see here are our default themes. We know they're the default themes because when you look at the GTK drop down here, we can see the likes of high contrast and new mix and that's because they're coming from this folder mostly. And if we look into them, you'll see that their structure resembles that of the theme we just downloaded. So yeah, let me go to the terminal again. We're still running under sudo. So I'm gonna say move downloads paper GTK theme forward slash paper. I wanna move it to user share themes. And now let me just verify that's there by using ls. In fact, I'll use the al flag to list them uh, with more details. And as you can see, paper is now there. If I go to the tweak tool and I look at this dropdown, there still isn't there still isn't an option for that, and that is because we just need to restart the tweak tool. It's a bit irritating, but fine. And as you can see, we now have paper. And as soon as we choose that, our terminal color scheme changes, our windows change appearance, the control box looks different. Um, however, we can't change the shell theme. And basically, when we choose the uh, window and GTK, well, the window and GTK theme basically seem to be the same thing here. My understanding is that GTK is a library of controls that encompass things like this tab control, that encompass things like this check drop down and this toggle switch and all that kind of good stuff. And the window theme is actually the control box and where the title is and stuff like that. And with other themes, that difference is more prevalent, but with paper, it kind of all seems to just come together. The shell theme is basically the shell is this top bar up here. Shell is this window. Shell is what this modal should look like. Shell encompasses what the activity overview looks like. So to change the shell theme, you must first ex enable an extension. So click on the vertical tab extension. And somewhere here, there is an extension called user themes. Enable that and then restart the tweak tool. And now you should be able to choose from here the paper shell theme. And as you can see, the shell at the top goes from black to a sort of slate gray. This all changes. If you press on the button, it now looks more consistent with the rest of the theme. Uh, this looks hideous because whilst I was showing off the toggle switch, I accidentally enabled the global dark theme. If I turn that off and restart tweak tool, things should look a lot nicer. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. This theme is kind of in its early stages. As you can see, it basically warns that it's in beta and that the icons are in alpha. It seems to work okay for me. Sometimes there are some discrepancies like the control box, which is basically this cross button won't render properly. And in which case the solution is typically to press Alt and F2 and type in R. And R will restart the GNOME shell and therefore restart, um, will generally fix any rendering issues. The next thing I wanna do is, is install a wallpaper. And I happen to know of this really cute wallpaper called BitDay. So if you search for bit day and it's on an imager album, look at this. So the general idea is, is that you have a different background for each portion of the day. So in the morning, you use this wallpaper, late morning, this one, and so on, all the way until sunset and then eventually night. And for this video, I'm just gonna choose uh, afternoon. And I'm gonna save the image into my pictures folder. And then I'll open it, right click, set as wallpaper. And when I go to my desktop by pressing and holding Windows and D, you can see that I now have the theme. This usually isn't my style. However, the cool thing is, is that if you go to GitHub and I just know how to find it via my own GitHub profile, I, because I started in the past, there is this repository called BitDay Linux and you basically install this script and it creates a cron job. So for every hour, it runs and it checks the time of day and it uses the corresponding wallpaper. So if you want to configure that to work, you can feel free to do so. I'm not gonna do it in this video because quite frankly, I couldn't get it working the way that I needed it to on Linux Ubuntu GNOME, but other people have had success with it. So if you wanna check it out, then you should feel free to do so. Uh, another cool place to find wallpapers, let me just open a new window here, is reddit.com wallpaper. And you can search by top you know, month or whatever, and you can choose some pretty cool wallpapers from here. 
But I'm going to keep this one because I'm not really too fussed at this time. Now it's time to install some GNOME extensions. And the way we do that is via the tweak tool. By default, you get a few built-in extensions. For instance, we saw earlier that we enabled the user themes extension. Another one I quite like that comes pre-installed is the places status indicator. Watch in the top left here. When I enable this, we get a new drop-down with the title places. And when we click on this, we can choose, for example, downloads. I like this because you saw just a few minutes ago when I downloaded a theme to go to the downloads folder, I'd press the activity overview and go to files and then I click on downloads. Well, now I can streamline that process by just going to places, downloads, and there you go. I might even assign a shortcut key to that. Let me show you quickly how to install extensions. I'll install a couple and then I'll install all the ones that I know I want to use later on. So you click on get more extensions and you have to use Firefox for this. It will ask you if you want to allow the website to run GNOME Shell integration. Click on allow and click on allow and remember if you want to remember that option. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. And then when you refresh the page, that red error should be gone. Yes, it is great. The extension that I want to install is called Icon Hider. What was, as you can see, in the top right here, we have this keyboard language drop down. I'm not a fan of that and I want to remove it. So I'm going to click on icon hider and then I'm going to enable it. And as you can see, it will ask us if we want to download and install it. I do, so I'll press install. And then we get this, uh, I think it's called a accessibility icon, but we also get this little grid. And even though it did enable the, uh, the accessibility icon, I'm gonna disable it by, uh, I'm not really sure which option it is offhand, but I do know if it's a disable the keyboard, it's this one, and now the keyboard icon is gone. But what is the, uh, I guess it's that one, yeah, A11Y, whatever the relation is, I don't know. But now I've got rid of that keyboard icon, I prefer this grid, basically. I've just swapped one for the other, but yeah, it's great. And there we go. If you go to the extensions now, you need to restart the tweak tool, as always. But now when you go to... Uh, the extensions tab you can see that we have icon hider and typically you'll have the option to remove the extension if you want to you can also click on settings and choose settings so as you can see the ones that I chose earlier have been applied and there are various utils you can even hide that if you want hmm, should I do that I don't know I quite like it actually so yeah I'll install a few more extensions that I want and then I'll give you an overview of what they do all right, so I thought that I would have more extensions than this, but as I got to thinking, which ones do I want? I realized that I don't use that many and most of the ones that I do come pre-installed. So I use alternate tab for starters. So by default, when you disable this, and if you were to open a bunch of, for example, Firefox windows, let me just open two, and you press control tab, as you can see, there's only one icon for Firefox. If you want to see the individual windows, you have to hover over the icon and then choose one of the windows from this secondary window. I don't like that, it's quite irritating actually. So by enabling alternate tab, it shows them all in the same uh, modal and yeah, it shows the window preview as well, which is kind of handy. Um, auto move windows is quite simple. I use multiple workspaces. As you can see, I've got workspace one and workspace two. And when you use auto move windows, I'm basically saying whenever Skype opens, automatically open it in workspace two. You can move applications to your second workspace by right clicking on the title bar and clicking on move to workspace down. But if I had to do that every time I open Skype, it'd be quite annoying. So I used auto move windows to do that. Icon hider we've looked at already. So we also looked at places status indicator. Um, the only other extension I really use, I think, is Workspace Indicator, and that's what gives me this Workspace Indicator here, because when you have more than one workspace, sometimes more than two, it can become a bit disorientating. You're like, uh, which workspace am I on again? So it's just handy to have that. Just so you know, by the way, a handy shortcut, you can switch between workspaces by using Control, Alt, and then up and down keys. There are just a couple more things I want to change. Um, under Windows, I want to enable the Minimize and Maximize buttons. That's good. I also want to go to workspaces and I want to um, uncheck this checkbox or toggle or whatever you want to call it. And I also want to maintain a static number of workspaces and I want two. And really as far as customizing Ubuntu goes or GNOME, I'm pretty happy with this. 
you know, a lot of people are going to want to install some kind of dock, like Dash the Dock or Simple Dock or Docky or Plank or whatever else you can think of. I don't use a dock because I rely quite heavily on my keyboard for my workflow because frankly, if I want to open Chrome, for me, it's just easier to press start and then type in C and enter. That's just a really quick way for me to open Chrome. You know, and if I want to view an overview of what I'm running, I prefer Control Tab or the Activities window. It just doesn't, I just don't like that docs. It's a peculiar thing I know, but I can never find a dock that worked well for me on GNOME. Anyway, that concludes part two. In the next part, we're going to look at essentially pimping out our terminal because the GNOME terminal is not that impressive. Thank you for watching.